Okay, so every now and again you just come across one of those videos that makes you completely lose faith in mankind. Because universities are meant to foster the knowledge of mankind and pass it on to the next generation. And when you're getting this sort of crap in universities. So if you're saying that you disagree with her approach, it means that you are vested in the Western and Eurocentric way of understanding, which means you yourself still need to go back internally, decolonize your mind. So decolonizing the science would mean doing away with it entirely and starting all over again. I mean, with that level of stupidity in universities, what sort of future can there be for mankind? Science as a whole is a product of Western modernity and the whole thing should be scratched off. Yeah, she wants to abolish all of that, totalizing Western science, or as we call it in the West, science. And what's the first thing, the very first thing our precious little black snowflake does after she says that she wants to abolish this totalizing, colonializing Western science. She picks up her tablet, the very apex of the very science she was just bad-mouthing, and swipes her device to start browsing. So, let's take this one more time from the top. Our heroic social justice warrior here in her safe space at Cape Town University wants to decolonialize, whatever that may mean, science. It was going to be one of the, the, the coming questions, how do we even start to decolonize science? Because science is true because it is science. And, you know, what can you do? If I personally were committed to enforcing decolonization, science as a whole is a product of Western modernity and the whole thing should be scratched off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they teach you at Cape Town University, but let me just let you in on a little secret here. Modern civilization is a monument to science. It's that simple. It's a monument to scientific advance. I mean, I think you might be a little confused about what science is. Science is the endeavor of building models with predictive utility about reality. The fact that they have predictive utility is what verifies them as an accurate description of reality. And it is that understanding of reality that allows us to build everything from smartphones to spacecraft. Science as a whole is a product of Western modernity and the whole thing should be scratched off. <laughs> so if you, want, if you want practical solutions to how to decolonize science, we'd have to restart science from, I don't know, an African perspective, from our perspective of how we've experienced science. Science really doesn't depend on your perspective. It only cares about whether the models you propose have predictive capability or they don't. Whose concepts are valid no matter where they originate. It doesn't matter if the person has black skin or white skin, whether they're a boy or a girl, whether they consider themselves of African origin or not. The concept is valid no matter where it originates. Science just doesn't care where the idea comes from. It only cares if it is an accurate description of reality. For instance, um, I had a question for all the science people. Is uh, There's uh, a place uh, in Kezer, in Mkabia Lingana, and they believe that through uh, the magic, the black magic, they call it black magic, they call it witchcraft, others that... Oh no, please don't say that black magic is going to be the new African science. They call it witchcraft, others that you are able to send a lightning to strike someone. So can you explain that scientifically? Because it's if it's something that happens... <laughs> what happens next just needs to be seen to be believed. Okay, for those who missed it, that was the guy putting up his hand and saying, actually, you know that thing about, you know, people being able to curse people and get lightning to strike them? It's not true. And this was their response. The fact that it's not true is irrelevant for uh, African science, for decolonialized science. And here is new African science girl, absolutely overjoyed that someone doesn't believe her African science about being able to curse people and get lightning to strike them. Let's see how the moderator tackles that, shall we? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I need to address you directly. When we started this, we, ag we agreed on certain house rules. Okay. And by you doing that, you're disrespecting the sacredness of the space. I'd like to ask you to first please apologize Sorry. to the panel directly. Number two, understand the rules that we went by in this space. Because it's going to be very fun. That this, when we started, this is not an antagonizing space. And so what you're trying to do is collapse the space and make it antagonizing. Actually, I don't think he was trying to uh, collapse the space. I think he was trying to bring some reality to it. Look, if there was actually a African science where you could actually curse people and get lightning to strike them, I think someone might have actually found some applications for that by now. Military applications. <laughs> you know, maybe something like another fictional movie, like, I don't know, Raiders of the Lost Ark or something. Which we will not allow. This is a progressive space where people can to say their opinions. And we have noted how those opinions are going to be laid out. So I would like you to first apologize and then go on and agree to abiding by the rules of the space. Otherwise, I'd not, I, I would, if you're not willing to do that, I'd please ask you to remove yourself from this space. Thank you. Please okay. carry on. So I will finish. See, that very response is the reason why I am not in the science faculty. I did science throughout my high school years, and there was a lot of things that I just, um, yeah. Really? You're not in the science faculty. Why do I not find that surprising? But Western modernity is the direct antagonistic factor to decolonization because Western knowledge is totalizing. Totalizing? I think you misunderstand. Science is about building accurate models about reality. Models with predictive capability. I think what you're actually complaining about is not that it's totalizing, but that it's accurate. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. Um, if you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. <laughs> you know, valid. You know, maybe like in a way that, say, for instance, oh, I don't know, witchcraft isn't. It is saying that it was Newton and only Newton who knew or saw an apple falling and then out of nowhere decided that gravity existed and created a, an equation and that is it. For the re whether people knew Newton or not or whether whatever happens in Western Africa, Northern Africa... Uh, yes, that's right. A model with predictive capability is a successful one, one that describes reality. So, for instance, Newton's equations do give a fairly reasonable description of gravity. And we know that it's a good model because it works just as well in Africa as it does, say, for instance, in Europe, or on the moon, or on the sun, or for the galaxy. The thing is, the only way to explain gravity is through Newton, who sat under a tree and saw an apple fall. Uh, yes. Newton's laws do give a fairly reasonable description of, um, what was it called? Reality. So Western modernity is the problem that decolonization directly deals with to say that we are going to decolonize by having knowledge that is produced by us, that speaks to us and that is able to accommodate knowledge from our perspective. So you're going to start a new subject of uh, African science. If we want practical solutions to how to decolonize science, we have to restart science from, I don't know, an African perspective. From Which is going to have... Uh, witchcraft where you can summon lightning bolts to strike people but there is no gravity beautiful and this is the product of cape town university so if you're saying that you disagree with her approach it means that you are vested in the western and eurocentric way of understanding which means you yourself still need to go back internally decolonize your mind yes you've got to go back and decolonize your mind of what horrible stuff about trying to form predictive models of utility about reality. Yeah, all that predictive stuff, you've got to get rid of that if you want to study decolonialized science. Western knowledge is very pathetic to say the least. I, from a decolonized perspective, believe we can do more as new knowledge producers, as people who are given the ability to reason or whatever uh, is that. <laughs> yes, you're about to be given the pearls of wisdom. Uh, someone who thinks that, say, for instance, voodoo should be included as real science where Newton 
shouldn't. Brace yourselves, this may well induce a nuclear facepalm. People say we do when we think or rationalize. So decolonizing the science would mean doing away with it entirely and starting all over again to deal with how we respond to the environment and how we understand it. Thank you. <laughs> Now, I know some of you out there will be thinking, Pat Thunderfoot, we need to be more open-minded about these sort of things. Like, say, for instance, Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe. I'll let Potholer 54 explain. President Robert Mugabe gave us this insight into Zimbabwean politics when he believed a woman who said she could conjure diesel from a rock. In 2007, he dispatched three nicely dressed government ministers to witness a demonstration. And sure enough, they reported that it was all true. As you can imagine, crude oil, better yet, refined diesel oozing out of a rock, would be the answer to Zimbabwe's fuel shortage. But if something that happens, <laughs> so according to press reports, Mugabe gave the woman a million dollars to conjure up even more diesel from other rocks. Now there are two possibilities here. Either this is a magical process that could turn Zimbabwe into a net exporter of diesel fuel for the whole continent. So Western modernity is the problem that decolonization directly deals with to say that we are going to decolonize by having knowledge that is produced by us, that speaks to us and that is able to accommodate knowledge from our perspective. Or it could be an elaborate hoax with a hole drilled into a rock leading to a pump and a tank of diesel. It's a toss-up. Hard to say either way. OK, turned out it was a tank of diesel being pumped through a man-made hole, but it could have been the answer to Zimbabwe's fuel shortage. But for those who want to cut them a break and say, well, sure, OK, they're into a bit of science denialism, but it's not like that ever hurt anyone or anything, is it? You see, when you ask the question, does HIV cause AIDS, the question is, does a virus cause a syndrome? Oh, damn it, South African President Thabo Mbeki. <sighs> With this statement, Mbeki took charge of a government that promoted herbal remedies to treat people with AIDS. If we want practical solutions to how to decolonize science, we would have to restart science from, I don't know, an African perspective. From that promoted herbal remedies to treat people with AIDS instead of retrovirals that might have saved their lives. How does a virus cause a syndrome? Well, perhaps if you read a medical textbook or asked someone who's published studies on the subject, you'd find out. A Harvard study concluded that the South African government's denial of the HIV-AIDS link led to the deaths of over 300,000 people who didn't get the treatment they needed. So, decolonizing the science would mean doing away with it entirely and starting all over again to deal with how we respond to the environment and how we understand it. Thank you. You engage in science denial that would kill millions before reaching for a product that is the very apex of the science you want to abolish. I mean, damn, even for a social justice warrior, special snowflake, that's some pretty messed up shit. 